Ladies and gentlemen, moms and dads, boys and girls, welcome to the 159th, oh my, how did that happen, episode of Litvok Leadership Live. I am so excited to be back after basically almost a nine-month hiatus. We're going to have a great show tonight. We're going to be talking about the secret to living a life of positive self-talk with my guest, who would the first thing we're going to do with my guest is have him guess how many times he has been a guest because he is my number one guest on the show. No, it's not three. I can see him off camera. So think again, Eric. But hey, before we, we get started, we're on a lot of social media as Litvok Leadership. You see the list there, but I'm going to say them anyways YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. Just opened a Pinterest and a Rumble. So just type Litvok Leadership at any of that social media, hit like, hit follow, hit the bell, hit whatever you got to hit so you are notified when something is posted. A lot of the stuff is posted the same across, but there are special things for each social media platform. So without further ado, let me bring in the one, the only, Eric Bam. All right, Eric, what's going on, my man? Man, I'm just happy to be back with you. I know it was your first guest, and I I was going to say this was my third, but as I'm thinking, is think it about it now. Fourth? Was is it my fourth? Maybe it was nope. on a, like a show with a couple other people. No, no, no. Think know. about it. So, hello, Randy Chafee. All right, so Eric, you were when I was driving through Alabama. Yes. We did the pilot episode on Instagram. I remember. Okay. Yeah. Which, which you would have to source for me. Um, I remember doing the ABC on... show. I remember the ABC no, show. Okay. Tim is guessing five. Tim, you are wrong. <laughs> it's it was come, shocking. Dude. Okay. We've also got Cynthia Mannion here today. Good to see you, Cynthia. Thanks, Cynthia. Um, and, and Cynthia, we do need need to book you. I know that I ended up canceling on you twice, Can but you I had open me, heart please? surgery. Yeah. So, okay, back back to Eric. Okay, so wait, I got I got my list. So there was the pilot in September of twenty. There was the second episode in. Oh, sorry, it was August of twenty. Then there was the second episode in September of twenty. Then there was the 49th episode in October of twenty. Was that the then ABC there was the hundred and twenty? Huh? Was that the oh, ABC? I'm going ahead. No. Oh. Then there was the hundred and twenty fourth episode on in March of twenty one. <laughs> then the hundred and forty second episode in June of twenty one, and then the hundred and fifty fourth episode. But that this was a while ago because you know I had issues in September of twenty one. So all in all, this is your seventh appearance. Seven. On Litvok Leadership Live. Holy By smoke. far. Because, probably ladies the, and gentlemen. You, you probably have someone, me on because when I'm on, you people actually watch. Oh, very good. Very good. Well, and also, Eric is great because if I have a last minute cancellation and he's not doing anything, he's like, yeah, send me the link. Let's so it. let's see. Who who else we got here? Okay, my, my cousin, Sari, the world traveler yeah. is here. Yeah, hey, Sari. Cynthia... Love the one with you're with Eric. <laughs> Cynthia will be my guest another day. All Good. right. So, Good. and I think, do, do I have any other guests? Yes. 151. <laughs> yes. So uh, Tim Lord is my guest next week. And we're, we're, we're going to talk about that at the end of the show. So today, ladies and gentlemen, uh, as you obviously are aware, you can join the conversation with Eric and me by posting a comment. I will be posting them up for everyone to see. So we're going to be talking about the secret to living a life of positive self-talk. So Eric, I'm going to throw this out um, as the opening statement, and I want you to build off of this. From Proverbs 1.1, Proverbs is one of my favorite books of the Bible. And if you haven't read through Proverbs, everybody, just take a chapter a day. There's 31 chapters, and uh, it, it's, it's a great way to get some wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. Proverbs 1.1, 1, 1, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. I think that's really appropriate when we're talking about uh, the secret to living a life of positive self-talk. What say you, Eric? Well, I would I would counter that with uh, probably Romans 
which, you know, which is be transformed by the, by the renewal of your mind and the renewal of your mind and your focus helps you focus on God and the right, and the right things, you know, and that's, yes. it's, it's, it's the same thing. You know, it, it is, it's an interesting topic to me from the standpoint that it is biblical. And, and when, you know, like you, you just mentioned Proverbs and for me to talk about Romans 12 too, I mean, there, there's two out of probably a hundred Bible verses that talk about having your mind right. And when your mind is Absolutely. right, you're focused on the right things. And when you focus, you know, that that's why people that are on drugs don't make great decisions. No. You know, it, it's, it's probably why people that are out just getting hammered on a Saturday night aren't making great decisions. It, it's because their mind's not right. It's not focused on the right things. And, and, and I think that is, that is just, you know, it's it's it should, should just be the foundation. What what we think about and what goes on in our head should be the fa- foundation of how we live our life and the way we push ourselves in the right way. But enough people don't take it seriously. You agree? I I I, I completely agree. And I think what people don't realize is they may be let let's not talk about social media for for a moment. Let's not talk about what we say in front of other people. Let's just talk about what we say when we're driving our cars. Let's just talk about what we say while we're walking the dog. Because you want to know who hears that? You do. You're the only one. You hear it, and and it gets put, like you just said, in your head. Ephesians 4.29 says, "Let and yeah, I've got a bunch of verses here. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouth, but only such as is good for building up as fits the occasion that it may give grace to those who hear. Okay. Yeah. You, you want to be giving yourself some, some grace too. I mean, we're not going to talk about COVID, but we're in endemic. Okay. And having people, I think there's a lot of people out there who are looking back at the horrific stuff that they went through and they're churning it over and over and over and talking about, the problems that they had. I mean, I I know someone that guys continue it. You, you you ask them something and it always gets steered around to a problem as opposed to what's coming up and what's going on in the future. It's like a quarterly business review where all right. you do is talk about what was wrong in you know not ninety days ago. Yeah, you know I. It's interesting that you mentioned that person. I don't think the show is for that person. I think that person is always probably going to be that way. This show is for the person that's on the fringe of like, you know, like today was okay. One of, one of the things that when you ask somebody, you say, Hey, how was it? And they go, it was all right. Well, was it all right? Or was it good? Because it, it's the difference between an A minus and a B plus. Right. Mm-hmm. And they're both pretty, very similar and make it the A minus and not the B plus. That, there's nothing wrong with that as we become adults. We we have got to learn. You, know, you mentioned driving in your car and the things you say to yourself. We've got to learn to freaking start rooting for ourselves. We've oh, got yeah. to root for ourselves to win, and we don't do it. If you want to get to new heights, it won't happen with the same old mindset. Your mindset's no. got to change. You know what? On, on, um, I, I'm on a show with Steve Rizzo every other week. You know, Hey, I'm talking here. And we talked about the hero's journey a couple of weeks ago. And if you look up the hero's journey, if you're watching the show, you can see it's in, it's about how, how the hero starts and where he gets to. And, and I won't get into all that detail, but the interesting part about the hero's journey is when they start here and they work their, their way around and they get all the way back and they've, they've, they've killed the dragon or they've, they've survived, you know, a heart attack or they've, you know, and when they get all the way back to the other place, they realize that the place they started at, they've outgrown it, right? They've outgrown oh, right. that place because they've learned and they progressed and they got better and they rooted for themselves and they pulled themselves up by the bootstraps along the way. We have got to learn to root better for ourselves. And we don't do it. It's the biggest miss in in the in in, in our society. I think you know it may it may not be the biggest miss in Ethiopia, but it's a big miss here that we have the means. Right. We have the means to have a great life and to go chase it down. But we just sit here and we hold ourselves back because we don't we think we're not worthy. We think we're not good enough. We think people wouldn't invest in us. We think people wouldn't like us. We, we think we look like crap. But you, I mean, I can name a, a thousand things, but we don't root for ourselves. And the reality is all of those things. People aren't thinking about you. They're too busy thinking about themselves. 
Think well, about and, you and, and look for yourself to win. Well, Sorry, and what you're to... talking about is breaking the programming of the words that have been spoken over yourself, whether it is words you have spoken over yourself or like you talked about people who have said things about you. Okay, yeah. you, you know, Eric, I bet everybody doesn't like you. I bet most people do. There are some people that don't but, like me. But, but some people don't like you. For years, I said about myself, is to know Sean is to like Sean. But if you don't know Sean, you don't like Sean. Right. Okay? Be, because you've got to get to know me to understand where I am and how my head works. And I suspect it's very similar with you because you'll share on occasion something someone will post in response to some comments someone will post on social media in, in response to the positive that you are putting out there. And it's, it's, it's just trash. It's just yeah. trash and, and, and a negative attitude. So when someone has this issue, because I think it's an issue, they are choosing, choosing to embrace the negativity. I don't expect them to immediately turn around because you know what? I'm still a work in progress and so are you. But how do you see, what? where do you direct people when they say, man, I just got to get a better attitude? What do you tell people to do? I know what I tell people to do, but what you do know, you tell I, them to do? I, you, you and I are, are very different and very uh, a, a lot alike. Um, you know, for you, you're probably going to tell people to read the Bible and, and to pray and to get into themselves. And, 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 and I, I'm all for that. Right. I'm all for praying. You know, we've talked, we've had, we've had conversations about that. I think, um, I think one of the hardest things about praying is it's uncomfortable for a lot of people because they've never done it. And, and I think sure. we, we've had conversations about intuition and how I think intuition is God. I think intuition is the divine. I think intu intuition is the universe. I think intuition is, is, is God. Right. And for a lot of people, that muscle has never been worked out to to work that muscle and to listen to God and to listen to being what to what they're being told. We we think of intuition as this. My intuition said not walk down that dark alley. Right. We think of intuition as like telling us something bad's going to happen. Right. But intuition right. is also a good thing. It is God talking to you. And we have got to learn to, to work that muscle out and to make it bigger and to really understand that that's God. That's the divine. That's throw out all the things you want. That's God talking to you. Right. And and for well, me, and, and, so, well, hold, hold, let me ask you a question because, because oh, yeah. you, you said you said, well, so I'm all, I'm all about prayer. Right to to change the attitude. I'm also, all, you know what? There's some great books out there. One of my favorite books. I'm I listened to it during COVID. When COVID first hit, I bet I literally started listening to it again today. And it's called Unf Yourself, and it's like uh, Gary John Bishop, I think is his name. And it is literally one of my favorite books of all time. There's ten chapters, and I li listen to one chapter. I can listen to a chapter and get motivated and get determined, and, and something clicks in me that, that I get. Here, you know, this book right here, because I'm familiar with it, Steve Rizzo's book, yeah. Conversations with Bob, is freaking phenomenal. He has another book. I'll, I'll be transparent. I love this book, and he loves it the most. Um, but he's got a book, Get Your Shift Together, that I think is better mm -hmm. than this one. It's really good. I, 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 so I think to get out of, not to get out of a negative mindset, but to push yourself in a different way, you've got to change what you're doing. You know, I just literally posted a video on Facebook in the last two hours about comfort. And this is kind of along the comfort? same lines. Comfort. Comfort. Being comfortable. Comfort. Okay. Comfort. Yes. That com comfort creates discomfort. Okay. And when we become comfortable in our faith or we become comfortable in our family or our spouse or our children or our job, we, we stop learning and we stop growing. And we stop educating. And we stop hugging and we stop loving and we stop pouring into all those things. And so the video for me today was really kind of me. Sometimes when I post a video, it's really for me to hear it. Right. And for me today, the challenge was the last couple of weeks. Have I been pouring in, in enough? Have I been pouring in enough to work? And have I been pouring enough into my children? Have I been pouring enough into mm -hmm. friendships? And, and so I think sometimes one of the best ways to change your attitude 
and to maybe flip the switch is to start pouring into things and be a giver, man. Start giving. You, you want to change your attitude? Start giving because God will bless yeah. you. Every, when you give with the right heart, God will pour into you. Watch it happen. That's, so that's my answer. So, so, so I, I would say, you know, I agree that, you know, look, I, for a long time, I was listening to Ev Evan Carmichael um, and listening to, and I still listen to him on occasion or really the videos he, he puts together mm -hmm. um, and listening to Gary Vay Vaynerchuk, okay, for attitude and listening mm -hmm. to Grant Cardone for attitude. But you, you, you know what? I also li li listen to Joel Osteen. Sure. Okay. Because the thing about Joel Osteen and, you know, for all the haters out there, go ahead, say some negative stuff. I get post it. negative stuff. I don't care because you know what? When I listen to Joel Osteen, I yeah. think here's a real guy who's talking in real terms and the scripture is interlaced throughout the whole thing. He was the cameraman. And yeah, you look at him now and he's in charge of this mega church. And but you listen to him talk, you listen to him preach. He just sounds humble as humble can be, in my opinion. And he's just yeah. like a guy talking. Um, yeah, you know, you I, can need I, can to I throw, I just look, just to interject. I love Joel Osteen, and you're right. The people that want to bag on him, let them bag on him. I I don't I don't care what all that other stuff is about. I don't care what the church stuff is about with him. I don't care about like during during a hurricane he wouldn't open the church. I don't care about all that stuff. I don't care about it because I'm going to be selfish with if I can listen to him and take something from him. That makes me better. Yeah. I, I'm okay with that. Yeah, well, and he actually just, as 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 Sean the fact checker, he did open the church. It just took a little longer than the people right. who don't like him wanted it right. to take because they needed to set up some things for safety people, okay? Yeah. So and same, that's same, not same me staring at you, Eric. I'm just you throwing that out there. Me. You don't have to explain to me. It's okay. <laughs> throwing that out there for everybody. So, but, you, you know... Going back to what you were saying about, um, and, and I'm going to link, link it here, making an active choice about the people you allow to speak into your life. And yeah. the flip side of that is removing the people from your life who don't encourage and, and, and motivate. And I'm not saying, okay, removing those people by calling up going, yo, dude, I can't spend time with you anymore. Just back away. Yeah. Because you know what? The more you become positive, the more you rewire your brain, the more yeah. you change your programming based on positive people and the word of God. Trust me, the negative people that you hang out with that are a bad influence will not want to be near you. I agree a thousand. Okay, I'm so. pausing so you can jump in. No, I agree with that. I, you know, I'm I'm real big on unfollow those people. You know, I you you've heard me you've heard me talk about this, and we've had a little di disagreements over the past few years about about social media and about being people's uh, highlight films and this and that. And and I'm I'm all for that. You know, I I I tell people all the time, like, look, I I I feel like people use social media wrong. They use social media to complain and, and they have a bullhorn for their opinions and they can say every negative thing they want, every incorrect thing they want, never fact check any. And you know what? Say, save that stuff for sitting at a bar with your with your buddies because I because people don't need to see it on, on Facebook or Instagram. Yeah. I think what Facebook and Instagram should be used for. I think it should be your grandma's uh, photo album that sat on her coffee table when when Absolutely. you were when you were a kid. Because and by the way, and you know. The difference that you and I have, like, I, if all I did was post great stuff, I realized that's not all my life. Like, we just had a conversation about me being in the hospital a couple weeks ago on Tuesday, right? Yeah. And I, did anyone know that? No, I never posted it because because no one, you know, who cares that if if I'm in the hospital, my haters, they care, right? Nobody else really cares. <laughs> we're on to, we're on to our own lives, and and so post your highlights because by the way when you went to grandma's house and you opened the photo album there was never a picture of hey this is a photo of uncle johnny's foot that he he lost his toe due to diabetes like it, that's not there no. you know it, it is highlights and they are smiling and I'll, I'll take it a step further because this is something i actually just uh, submitted an article for pmq magazine that i write every month 
I think that we should actually start doing You and I have talked about video for a long time. And one of the things that I actually yeah. love about doing this is here, here's the miss. Here's the miss for people my age and your age and the people watching this is this. If I held up a photo of people walking around Manhattan in 1902 and you saw that picture, there's nothing of them. There's nothing. There's maybe there's their name in a in a, a book that they got married. Maybe there's their name. All, you know, we have an opportunity to leave video. So my yeah. grandkids and my great grandkids and my great grand they could see us and be like, oh, he hung out with that idiot. Like what? What? Are, what do they do? You know, like they'll get to see instead of seeing a photo, they'll be able to see like, oh my gosh, like I do look like him, or I do have the same yeah. mannerisms, I do talk with my hands, and it is such an opportunity I think for us right now. And most people in our generation are deathly afraid, either even posting pictures. But they're deathly afraid of doing doing video like this, and I love it. This is gonna our digital footprint will live on forever, and I love this. Thank you for having me on. My great great grandkids will be like, "Hey, who is who is that Litvak leadership guy? What a weirdo!" You know. Well, and okay, so so you you talk about um, you know just doing things and making mistakes and leaving a footprint. You know what about? And I'm gonna throw this out the biblical examples we have. Uh, Moses, okay. Throwing down the tablets, um, le leaving Egypt, murdering somebody, which I am not endorsing. <laughs> Let me be clear. As I'm saying it, I'm like, "Let me be clear. I am not endorsing murder." All right. right. Thank you very much. No. Um, but but that but then you've got you know even you know David, all kinds of issues with with David, Solomon, the wisest man in the world, tons of issues with with him. Uh, let's look at the disciples that followed Jesus. Do we think that they all had their act together? I'm thinking the answer is no. Oh, it's a huge no. no. Yeah. It's a huge so, no. Go ahead. Yeah, well, I, I want to, one of the things I, I, it was kind of funny as I thought about this show over the last couple of weeks. It's funny how things pop up that you see and you're like, oh, that, you know, and I wrote this down because I saw it and I thought, wow, this is, you know, and. It ties into what you're just talking about. It's a quote from Mark Twain. 20 years from now, you'll be more disappointed by the things you didn't do than the ones you mm -hmm. did. So sail away from the safe, safe harbors, explore, dream, and discover. You know, and that's kind of, some, you know, you and I have had a lot of discussions about action, 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 right? And that quote is about taking action. And it's, dude, we, you know, it's, no different than me talking about a couple weeks ago, sitting on my couch on a Monday and paralyzing my ass to the couch or the fact that I probably had, you know, anything from cancer to needing a female hysterectomy. There was something wrong with me. Right. And that I MD is not good. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, I paralyzed myself to sit there and think the worst. And I did to the point that I got up the next morning and I'm going to the ER and I really sit there and thought, why didn't I just go yesterday? You know, why, why am I waiting? Why didn't I go? And I, you know, I, on Steve's show, we hey, talk all been the there, time. done that. <laughs> I, I know, I know you have, you know, on Steve's show on our show together, you know, I'm, Hey, I'm talking here. I, I bet the words action come out of my mouth a million times every week. Cause I think not, I think I, I know, I know I'm guilty of it in, in my life at times where I just set back and you know when we kicked off the show talking about comfort creating discomfort that i was i became comfortable in, in a marriage i became comfortable as a father i became comfortable as an employee and and sometimes i i've always thought the best kick in the ass you can get is the one you give yourself and when you really open up and realize like hey i've got to be better and when you really realize that it's more humbling and it's the best thing you can do is is to kick yourself in your own ass and take some action and go chase down the problems and go get it man because that's that's where the sweet spots are in life is when you when you stop just sitting back and being comfortable you know it's it's i will tell you i have told every supervisor i have ever had um you can't motivate me or put any more pressure on me then I motivate myself and put pressure on myself. There is nothing you can do that I yeah. have not done for and to myself already. And people yeah.
don't get that. They don't right. get that. That look, people, it's you have one life. You have one life to live. At least I do not believe in reincarnation. So you have one life on this earth to live. I'll, I'll say it like that. And yeah. you need to do so something about it. I used to work with a guy that his favorite word, and everyone who has worked with me with this guy will know exactly who I'm talking about. His favorite word was try. Well, you know, we're trying yeah. to do this. We're trying to do that. And to the point where... You know, we, instead of putting a swearing jar on the table, we put a trying jar on, uh, on the table. And he would have benefited from this scripture, Psalm 141.3, set a guard, O Lord, over my mouth, keep watch over the door of my lips. If people would just think, or not even think, but say, I'm not going to say anything negative to, to, today. I'm just not going to say anything negative and really burn that into their brain People would be surprised about how much they just don't talk. Right. I I had a similar, kind of similar, but a little different situation. Um, it was last August, so almost a year ago. I'm going downtown to see John Legend live, and this guy calls me. I'm talking to him, and and he's he's got this clock like on his desk, and he's counting down the, the days and hours till he can retire. And I said, bro, like, I love you to death, but you are the dude when you retire, you will die in two weeks because you have nothing. You live for retirement. And I, I right. said this to him and it motivated me enough that I made uh, bracelets out of it. I said, I said, bro, I'm just getting started. Like, there it is. I made break. I made 200. I, I'm just getting started. And the other side says big day. Cause I say that all the time. Big day. <laughs> I, I said to him, I'm like, dude, like I I'm 52, but I feel like I'm just getting started. Like I, I oh, feel yeah. I mean, I'm in good health. Um, I freaking look wicked good, right? Um, Not a, as nice as me. No, no. I have a good job. Um, I have a beautiful house. I have some beautiful children. I've got some great friends. I'm not done. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to rock another 52 of these things. I'm going to be like 104, man. They're going to have to kick me out. Right. But I'm just getting started. And so if if somebody has that kind of my old boss, Mark Duffy, used to call it stinking thinking. If somebody's got stinking thinking going on now, it is easy for a couple of guys like you that are very optimistic to say, well, just change your just, just change it. And that's sometimes it's people that's years of people have been worn down by that. And it's hard to get out of that. But you, but you know how you change that? It's what what gets put in. What are you listening to when you're driving? Right. Yep. That for me is huge. Like I'm listening to an audio book every time I'm driving. What am I listening to when I'm driving? What am I? The, your, your program will change it. There you go. Um, what do you listen to when you're driving? What are you reading in the morning? I've had people say, "We do you always wake up this optimistic? Well, no, probably five out of seven days I do. Right. But right. usually one of the things I do almost every morning on Facebook, Instagram, in LinkedIn, TikTok, Oh, yeah. Every it's the same stuff for me, right? Is, I get my Eric Bam positive post. You'll you'll see something almost every single morning. Five out of seven days, I'm like, I see that, I'm like, oh yeah, well, right. And then two days out of the seven days, I'm like, I don't have it today. And so when I post something, it's usually something that motivates me, that kind of kickstarts my mind and gets me going. And I, I, I'm telling you, man, there there was a friend of mine. And this was in the last couple of years, a friend of mine, he posted one morning, he's very kind of a negative person. He posted on Facebook one morning. He said, oh, the weather's awful today and I have a headache. And dude, all the people on me too, this weather's awful and I have a headache. Like, like 45 comments. I said, bro, do me a favor. Tomorrow. News for 30 days. No, I, I, I called him. I said, do me a favor. Tomorrow. Tomorrow morning. Same time. I want you to post. I feel great. I'm going to have a good day. Regardless of how you feel, post it. Right. So the next morning, hey, I feel great. I'm having a good day. But, but, but I feel great too. Today is going to be great. Da, da, da. And we started looking. I, I And out of the, there was like 40 comments one day and like 47 comments the next, right? 47, seven more on the positive. But of those com those 40 comments that were, 22 were the same people. So from one day to the next, you know. He's a leader. And, and misery loves company. And, oh, yeah. and so, so does joy and so does happiness and so does motivation. It loves company too. So it's funny. You're going to throw, throw, throw this up. 
Uh, like the steps you made yesterday, determine today. The action you take today will define tomorrow. So focus on today and have expectations for tomorrow. Now, where I want to go with this, Eric, is, you know, some people may be looking at you and looking at me and going, yeah, but you guys are positive and you have not had bad things happen to you. Well, you know, I have had failures in, in my life, but that doesn't mean that I'm going to wallow in it. You learn from it. You gain some knowledge from it. You gain some wisdom from it. And then you leverage it to have further successes. I, I mean, Eric, what do you say to those people out there that, you know, just say, well, I've got it so hard. You don't understand. This is why I, I am the way I am. Because I say go to the Bible and listen to me. I, go ahead. Listen to Lit Lock Leadership. I, I have a, I, this is a great, great question. I have a friend who is going through a divorce right now, like just started, it just started, right? And he's struggling. Like, you know, the whole, I know you haven't been divorced, I have. The emotional side of it is hard, right? And it's very hard. It's hard to be rejected. It's like hard to figure out, like, when do I see my kids? It's hard to figure out finances. Where do I live? What do I do? And, you know, and I, and I told him, I said, you know, there's two, there's two pieces to this. One is the emotional side. And, and that's hard. And I get it. I've been there. And then one is the physical side. And what I mean by the physical side, the emotional side is like, how often am I going to see my kids? That that will just, just rip you apart, right? This, but the physical side of it is, bro, take the steps to take some action in your life. You got to find a place to live. Is your job, how's that going to work out? You know, how does it work on, we have to get like a divorce attorney. We have, there are things to figure out, but you've got to lay the plan out where you've got to look mm -hmm. at the, what does my physical body need to do today to move the ball down the field? You're not going to score a touchdown every day, but what no. do I need to do to move the ball down the field a little bit? What to is get the one traction? thing I need to do today? What's the one right. thing? You know, and it's, it's a lot like, you know, who there was that, um, general in the army or whatever, who's done this speech a million times talking about get up and make your bed every day. Because when you make your bed every day, you feel good about you accomplish something and that accomplishment leads you to do. And, and I'm telling you from a, it's purely physical from a physical standpoint, what do I have to do today to make, to move the ball down the field? Just, and by the way, that's kind of my mentality from a sales standpoint too. I, I look at from a sales standpoint, go, how can I move the ball down the field on 10 accounts every day, 10 prospects? Because if I move the ball down the field on 10 things every day, the end of the year, I've closed a lot of business. Right? Absolutely. And so Absolutely. It's, it's no different. It's no different than that. But it is it is a lot for me about, like I said, the, the emotional side of it is is very hard. And I and I get that. But then there's a physical side of what has to happen. What do I physically need to do today? Who can I talk to? Where can I go? Who, who can I get an apartment? What what and and make a plan and put the plan in place every day. You know, the, the, the Bible talks about um, the sloth not yep. doing well. I can't yep. give you the exact quote, but if someone Googles Bible verses on sloth, you will see terrible things that occur and happen to the sloth. So you're talking right there, Eric, about people engaging their mind to have, what can I do today? What is What do I need, need to do to keep move, moving the boulder? What yep. about, and, and I'm bringing this up, I think a big thing that people miss is having physical exercise to keep their attitude where it needs to be. I know you like to walk. Yeah. Um, when I had my heart surgery, I had to stop going to the gym. I've just started, you know, and then I went through cardio rehab and all that fun, which was like quasi gym. For the past yeah. week, I've been going back to the gym, lifting some weights, feeling great. My like back is um, that workout sore that yeah. makes you stand up straight. You know what I'm saying? And, yeah. and, and I'm loving it. But I think can a you, lot of people... Can you show everybody your scar real quick? I am not going to show everybody my scar. Just know my scar is from here to here. It is what I call the big boy scar. Not putting that on video, not going to happen. Because um, I will get in trouble if I do that. If anybody wants to see uh, it, I saw it earlier, so we went live, so... <laughs> But, you, you know, what, you know, I, I, I think people miss out sometimes or they go into the ditch on either no exercise because they're, they're just digging into positive stuff um, 
or it's all exercise and then they become like you, you know a um raging <laughs> muscle freak um you know people you 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 need to take care of your your body too yeah i i there are you, you know you do see people that will trade they'll trade one addiction for another in some ways, you know, and, and they'll train doing drugs for all of a sudden, well, now I'm going to go to the gym and, and I'll take that any day of the week. Right. But it does make you one dimensional. And, uh, and, you know, so it, it is about being multidimensional. And, and I do like to go, I walked two miles today. It was 104 degrees or 102 degrees outside today. Right. But, I, but I, I literally, the book I mentioned earlier on F yourself, I'm listening to that again. And I listened to a chapter and a half of it today and got done with the walk felt physically good. And felt mentally good because because I got I got one little thing today I got one little nugget today that I'm like oh that that's that's yeah. why I listened to this today you know so well, um I, go ahead no I was gonna say you know I've I've been doing the 98 days of summer thank you yeah. very very much where when I walk Solomon in in the morning with the morning walk and Sol with with Solomon and Sean I will record my video that I'm posting yeah. every day during these 98 days. And people have said to me, why are you doing this? And my answer is the same. I'm doing it for you and I'm doing it for me. Right. It is motivation for me. Cause when I hear this coming out of my mouth, I remember, Oh yeah, I believe that. Yeah. And I'm doing it for you to help you make a difference in your life. It, it goes back to that whole thing we were talking about earlier. What are you listening to? Yeah. What are you saying? Therefore, what are you listening to? Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree with that a thousand percent, man. And and I, I love that you're doing 98 days of summer. I'm doing it as well. Mine's not the thing I'm trying to do this summer for 98 days is something very private for me. Um, that's, it's not that big of a deal, but it's something that I'm doing personally for you is to go live 98 days. And, and I think it's, I think it's phenomenal. And uh, you know what, I, I think for you to say you're doing it for someone else. And I think it's, I think it's a hundred percent for you. And I think the person that's grown, that's going to look up, you know, another 40 days from now and go, wow, I did that. And here's what happened. And, and, you know, I think one of the things that just told is a total rabbit hole for me in, in some respects, but talking earlier, right. about going, going live and doing video and this and that. And, you know, my son's 25 years old and there are guys over here that are commenting that are watching the show that if they had to sit right here with, with, with you or I would just flubber and couldn't get through it all and would be lost. And yet here's my son at 25 who's now hosting. Oh, yeah. podcast. He's been a, a guest alive on this show among others. And, and it makes you better for life and sales and knowing how to handle yourself and, and what you're thinking. It just, it, it, people have got to start doing more video. And, and even if you do a show like this and literally no one watches Keep doing it. You you look at your show as an example. And the first time we did it together, we went back and we would laugh at it, right? Versus now, it's so much better. Oh, well, and look, I'm going to bring this up because it, it's happened a few times as we've been on this live stream. I've yeah. stuttered a couple times, okay? And here's the thing. I know why I did. It's because I was talking so fast and I yeah. had some a thought in my head. My mouth couldn't keep up with it. That is a personal, we'll even say a personal cross that I have to bear, that right. I have to make sure I talk slow enough that I don't stutter. Because I was in speech therapy, gosh, until fourth grade and really? then skipped a year, it went away. And then I was in speech therapy for two or three more years and I stuttered all the time. So every time I've caught it, I'm like, Sean, you've got to slow down. But I'm so excited and passionate about this topic that what are you looking at you're looking at someone's comment oh, i'm reading the comment over here from uh, from jeremiah thurman oh yeah um, let's put up i haven't seen jeremiah in a while failures are different from emotional holds and weight down lives a certain level of success allows a lifted level of self-confidence and assurance jeremiah is one of the brightest most driven people that i know um Thank you for your service, Jeremiah. Jeremiah, um, ex-military. He's a veteran. He came back from, from military and went back to school, got his PhD. We worked together for a number of years. Um, and Jeremiah is absolutely right that failures and emotional holds are different. 
don't let failure hold you back. Okay. Don't, well, you, it, you've it's got actually to something I have mindset. written down. Yeah, it's ha- something I have written down. When I saw that, you know, like you, you want to improve your life, get a couple little wins. You know, our boy Randy Chafee talks about throwing wins on the wind pile. You know, and and it's kind of Jer- to Jeremiah's point. You get get a win that you feel good about, and tomorrow get another win. And they don't have to be huge wins. We, like I said earlier, we're not we're not scoring touchdowns every day. We've just got to move the ball down the field on the things that are important to us. And whether if it's our job or if it's our family or if it's pouring into a relationship or what, whatever it is, we just got to we got to keep pouring in because when we pour in and we get poured back on, that that's the win, man. That's the win. You know, and and I would add to that, um, you got to understand your why. Yeah got to understand your why and you know i've heard simon sinek's speech on you know it it all starts with why um many times but it's really taken me until i think it was the middle of last year where i came up with focus my call no i'm not calling focus goal 60 okay i have a goal to do something by the time i turn 60 in believe it or not three and a half years. Okay. I will be 60. I've got this. And it seems like everything that I have done throughout my entire life, the positives, the negatives, the successes, the failures, the embracing faith, the coming to the Lord, having Jesus be my personal Lord and savior. All of that for me has pushed me in a direction to goal 60. And I would tell people, if you haven't goal set before, first you got to get your mouth right as to what you're saying and speak in a positive way. But then while you're doing that, figure out your why. From Timmy, you guys are motivational. Thanks for being sales giants and men of God. Keep me on track. That's all sarcasm from Tim. I, I, I know it's sarcasm thought when I see it. So, you know. We don't know this is from Tim. It could be bought from Boston Impressions, from, from his social that's, media person. That's Tim Lord. That's his uh that's his sarcasm font. I know it. I I know you well enough too that I know we're getting re- you're getting ready to pull the plug on me. We're gonna wrap this up. And, and we have gone 43 minutes, yes. I knew it was coming. And you're gonna say to me, Do you have any final words? Right? Eric. We've gone 43 minutes now of a 45 to one minute to one hour show. I'm thinking 45 keeps people's attention. Because, Quick question. When you send someone a meeting on Outlook where you want to have a conversation, what's your go-to time that you send them? I don't know. I don't think about that. I, I don't know. See, my go-to time is if it's like a deep conversation, never more than 45 minutes. Ever, uh, ever, ever. You lose. Oh, I got. I see. Oh, I see what you're saying. I don't know. I I don't think that. I don't think like that. So you 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 think way deeper than I do. Uh, I on only on some things. Hello, Tom. So Hello. Eric, we've been we have been talking about the importance of positive self talk, having the secret to living a life of positive self talk. I'm going to hand it over to you to wrap us up. Tell us how you embrace your secret. I would just end the show with what I started with, that you won't hit new heights in your life with the same mindset you've always had. And that served me well. If I, if I know I want more, I know my mindset has got to change. I know what I'm doing right now, what I'm pouring into has got to change. I've probably got to pour a little more or I'm, or I'm pouring in the wrong place. And like I said, if, if you want more in your life and you want to hit new heights in your life, whether that's personal, professional, your relationship with God, whatever that is, if you, if you want new heights, the same old thinking is not going to get you there. You've got to elevate your thinking to elevate your height. Absolutely. I agree 100%. We're by no means saying that it's from any one particular source. You need to find those sources that that motivate. I would encourage you to go to the Bible first, okay? You, you've you seen the bumper sticker, what, what, whatever, um, that says, and I'm paraphrasing, have things gotten so bad that we're turning to prayer? 
Okay. So <laughs> right. Don't wait until it gets so bad. Start with God. And then you can fold in some other things too. Looks like that one more comment. Cynthia enjoyed it. Very excited. Always positive to hear that from Cynthia. So folks, that's been Litvak Leadership Live, the 159th episode for seven-time guest Eric Bam, where we were discussing the secret to living a life of positive self-talk. Eric, thank you again for being my guest as I'm relaunching and I'm just excited to be here. Everyone else, everyone next scar. week. Show everyone the scar. What's that? Show everyone the scar. No, no, I'm not showing them the scar. I showed it to you. And if you didn't screenshot it, it's too late. Next week, we have Tim Lord, Creative Director at Boston Impressions and Chief Marketing Officer at Hypersphere Technologies. Is it Hypersphere? Did I say that yes. right? Yes, good dude. Hypersphere Technologies. And we're going to be talking about how to overcome triggers that set you off. So hey. be pondering that same time next week, 7 p.m. Eastern. Be blessed. Be well be, and be blessed in all you do. See ya. Oh, you're pointing. Okay, we can do the point. And now we do the hand.